Hello everyone. Thank you so much for logging in to our event this evening uh, called How to Ace the Technical Interview. We are going to give participants another uh, minute or so to log in and then we'll go ahead and get started. So just take this time to go ahead and get settled um, and we will get started momentarily. All right, it's 532, so let's go ahead and dive in. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us this evening uh, for our event, How to Ace the Technical Interview, presented by the Yukon Center for Career Development in collaboration with two awesome employers who are going to introduce themselves in just a second. Before I turn the mic over to them, I want to introduce myself as well. My name is Lisa Famularo, and I am an assistant director here in the Yukon Center for Career Development. My role here at the university is student facing, so I do a lot of career coaching appointments, which are one on one conversations with students about their career goals, uh, kind of setting those goals and then also achieving those goals. And I also work with a lot of different events and programs like the one that, that you're here for today. Another staff member who uh, unfortunately can't be here but deserves all the credit in the world is one of our student employees, Taylor. Uh, this event today was actually an idea that Taylor had um, because of the rising popularity of technical interviews and the number of students that are facing these types of interviews today. She thought it, this type of event would be really helpful and she did all of the planning and coordination to make this event happen today. Um, so I want to make sure that we give her a shout out even though she ultimately wasn't able to join us. So I will be facilitating facilitating in her place. And like I said, we're joined by two awesome employers who uh, I'm going to ask to introduce themselves as well. Um, one here from Google and one here from Henkel. So who would like to go first and take, take on the mic? <laughs> oh, we actually can't hear you. Oh, no, we just heard you a minute ago. <laughs> No, we can't. All right, Vincent, do you mind going first while uh, we work on the technical difficulties? Yeah, sure thing. No worries. So, hey, everybody. My name is Vinny Fazio. I am an application engineer at Hankel. So, what I do is um, supporting our industrial adhesive business in North America. And so, I work with our you know industrial customers, people that use adhesives in their production. Uh, so, anybody from your back. Uh, backyard, you know, pool supply manufacturer to, you know, John Deere, Caterpillar, large aerospace companies, consumer electronics, all of those other companies that use adhesives in their manufacturing processes. I work with them and our sales team um, to basically help uh, conduct lab testing, do equipment integration, and uh, basically help them work on their projects. And so um, I was a student at UConn as well, so I studied engineering physics with a mechanical engineering concentration and uh, was an intern at Hankel and got my internship through a uh, the STEM career fair um, when it was in the South Ballroom. And so, you know, I attribute a lot of you know, basically where I am today through, you know, events that, you know, helped prep me for, you know, getting, uh, you know, to where I'm at, helping me get prepared. Um, you know, all sorts of different organizations and stuff on campus that helped me, you know, get ready for, for the big show. So happy to be here. No, we still can't hear you. Hmm. Well, thank you, Vinny, for your introduction. Um, and not sure what's going on technically here, um, but I think we can fix it. So 
Perfect. I think um, Silas is going to try rejoining and we'll, we'll hopefully circle back to the introductions. But in the meantime, um, let's go ahead and get started talking a little bit about what we're going to cover today. So um, as soon as um, we can, we'll have uh, Silas do an introduction. But in the meantime, oh, yes, yeah. perfect. Perfect timing. Cool. Um, yeah, so my name is Silas. I'm a software engineer at Google. Um, I actually graduated from UConn in 2018. I was a computer science and engineering major. And then I joined Google right after, and I'm currently on the uh, travel ads team, and I'm a full stack engineer. So if you ever use like hotels or flights, that's kind of what I work on. Um, as far as technical interviews, uh, I, I was on the student end. I did technical interviews through Google. Um, so well versed on that side of things, I, I know how it feels. And over the last couple of years, I, I do run um, tackling interviews as the interviewer, so the other side as well. Awesome. So glad that we were able to get your mic working and hear that introduction. So um, throughout the presentation today, you'll hear again from both of these employers on their input on technical interviews um, throughout these couple of sections. So what we're going to be talking about today are starting with an introduction, going over like what are technical interviews, why are they important, then we're going to move into really the bulk of the presentation, which we'll talk about how you can prepare for technical interviews. We'll have an open Q&A at the end, uh, but you're welcome to submit questions throughout the presentation if you have them, and then we'll do a quick wrap up at the end. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So section one, our introduction, what are technical interviews and why are they important? So first and foremost, the purpose of a technical interview is to provide an opportunity for you as an applicant to showcase your technical skills and knowledge about a certain field or topic. It's important to note that technical interviews don't replace traditional interviews. A lot of companies use technical interviews in conjunction with traditional interviews where, and, and what I mean by a traditional interview is where you get asked a question and you answer that question just kind of verbally. Um, but the technical interview goes, tends to go deeper than that. And it assesses things like your hard skills, your knowledge, or your problem solving abilities. So for example, uh, if you do a technical interview that assesses your hard skills, Did we lose her? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we can fill in some time while she tries to get that sorted out. Um, so, Les, you want to talk? So, you said you run, um, you, you conduct technical interviews for Google. Mm -hmm. So what do those typically look like when you're interviewing candidates for either full time or internships or anything like that? Yeah, so um, full time internships, kind of the technical interviews differ in the number you do, but the base idea is the same. Um, at least for Google, you'll do one full interview and then four on site technical interviews. And like, like the slide says, it's, it's kind of an opportunity for you to showcase your skills. It's not, it's not necessarily like a test. It's more like it's more advertising yourself, getting the company to know like how you think. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like it's basically your pitch. So don't treat it like a test. Treat it like a, a way to show off what you can do. Right. That's what I'd say. Cool. So not necessarily like looking for the right answer, but how someone gets to that answer. Yeah. Like a strong yeah. interview is not an interview where the answer is given immediately. It's an interview where like we get to see how you think and we see the steps you take to get to the right answer. Totally. Yeah, I would say we do a pretty similar thing. I mean, so we're not so set in like, you know, something like, um, like, you know, programming or like a very specific field, something like it's, it's pretty, we, we end up encountering a lot of different things. And so when we do interviews, we do typically traditional interviews to start just to get a vibe for like, you know, people skills and like presentational and you know, like conversational skills, like the soft stuff. And then we, you know, typically take people in and do on-site or in-person presentations and give them um, sort of like a, like a, like an outline to follow and talk about a project or give them an on, you know, on the spot example of something to work through just to see how they tackle something on the fly. 
And so, you know, we kind of approach it like seeing how someone can utilize the resources that they have or have experienced to kind of get through that. Hey, Lisa, sorry, we kind of kept going through a little bit there. I don't know what is with the technical difficulties today. We never have this issue, but I appreciate you picking up. Um, so I heard you just saying that um, in, in the technical interviews that you've facilitated or you, you've seen before, uh, they tend to be kind of a real real time assessment of certain skill sets, um, which I think is a really good way to, to describe it. And um, I guess just one question before we move on and have no more technical difficulties the rest of the presentation is, would either of you say that there's anything that technical interviews assess besides these three categories that are listed here on the screen? Um, you go first. Yeah, I, I would say the the other big topic that's not written here is um, communication. Um, so, the, in fact, I would say it's probably the biggest one. How can you talk with a peer? So the interviewer is not necessarily like a, a person giving a test. It's like a future colleague, technically. So how can you talk with a peer and converse to get to a solution, work together? Um, so, and can you communicate your thoughts effectively, ask questions effectively? like that's the biggest challenge in a technical interview. And just to build off of that too, that's something Salesh and I both hit on when we were kind of hijacking the show, but I think communication is for sure the most important part of a technical interview. You can know, you know, you can be the biggest expert in your field, but if you can't communicate that in a way that people understand it, especially people that aren't necessarily on your level or with the level of experience or expertise that you have, then what you're saying is basically meaningless. And that's particularly prevalent in a role um, where it's like, you know, customer facing when you're trying to communicate, you know, test results or, you know, justification for specification or something like that. If you're not doing that on a way that everybody understands what's being, you know, you know pitched, then it doesn't matter. So I would say that's the big one. Great. Thank you both for, for adding that in. I agree that communication is super important um, with really anyone who's involved in a technical interview, whether it's the person doing the interviewing, maybe if it's like a group type of interview. Um, there's I, I, I know that there's a lot of different types of communication that could be assessed in those those settings. So our next slide um, kind of has some topics that we've already covered, but I'll, I'll go through them quickly anyway. The, some of the main ways that technical interviews differ from other types of interviews are that as opposed to talking about your skills and experiences, you're demonstrating your skills and experiences. So as opposed to saying that you're a good communicator, you're demonstrating that you're a good good communicator. Uh, in addition to that, they're, they tend to be less about your personality and company fit per se, um, and more about your technical ca capability, especially for technical roles. I do think there's some exceptions here in the sense of like, you know, Vinny, what you were just mentioning in terms of like, can you communicate what you need to communicate with other people on the team or customers or clients. Um, but in general, that those technical skills are really at the forefront. And um, one thing that I actually just brought up at the end of the last slide is that there's also a potential for collaboration with other candidates interviewing for the same position when you're doing technical interviews, which can show how you work with others on a team um, in kind of a high pressure situation because you and these other people are both vying for the same opportunity. So here, I'd love to pause for a second and ask both of you, have you ever either been in or facilitated a, a, a technical interview that had like a group component to it? And if so, what do you kind of look for in those settings specifically? So I personally have never been in a technical interview that's been a group setting. Um, the technical interviews that I've been in for Hankel and participate in are usually panel settings though. And so what we do is we have a few different colleagues from our end that are either, you know, um, application engineers, equipment engineers, uh, developmental engineers, or product developmental chemists. So you, they bring a few different, you know, ideas to the table. And then when we conduct our technical interviews, we basically provide an outline or, uh, you know, a kind of brief to the candidate, you know, a presentation to prepare and then preface that will give them some sort of problem to solve in the setting. And that problem can be anything from, you know, 
a question that they have to draw out their justification for to demonstrate, you know, their visualization and, you know, communication techniques and the way that those fit together um, or, you know, anything from describing how you would, you know, take apart and, you know, determine what the you know biggest uh, criteria for improvement could be on, on some sort of part. But um, so I, I would say in those kinds of settings, the um, collaboration more so comes from, you know, coming to understand that the people that you're working through that problem with and not trying to, you know, justify or say why, uh, but work with them through, you know, like, you know, we typically allow people to use us as like a resource when we're doing that sort of thing. So um, that's kind of how we approach that. Um, yeah, I would agree. Uh, we, we also don't do um, group interviews and kind of for us, it's similar where the collaboration comes in is you're kind of like working with your interviewer to solve a problem. So it's not like the interviewer gives a question and is silent and is waiting for an answer from you. You kind of work together, collaborate take steps to come to the to a final good solution, which may not happen instantly and may go through various turns. Thank you both for that perspective on uh, the importance of the interaction with the interviewers, whether it's one person or a panel of people. I think that that is something that is not very common in a traditional interview where it is more of like, I'm going to state a question and then be quiet while you give a response. It, it does tend to be more back and forth, more collaborative, uh, which is just something that you have to get used to with these types of interviews because it, it sounds very, very common. Um, that also, I think, is a really good segue into our last slide in this section about kind of the, the concept of a technical interview, which is the fact that they they vary. So it's not like every single technical interview you do is always going to be the same. Um, they vary based on the position or the industry that they're in, as well as other factors. So we have on the slide here some examples of how maybe in more of a STEM position, you might do an assessment or a, a technical interview that's based on something like coding, because that's a really common skill that um, employers like to assess if you're applying for a position that has a coding requirement. There's also this um, process called whiteboarding, which I'm hoping maybe one of the two of you could talk a little bit more about, um, where you are, are asked to kind of like brainstorm through a particular process or, or problem um, on a whiteboard, which is why it's called whiteboarding. Um, and, you know, th that problem or process that's that's um, focused on is something that you might be facing in that position that you're interviewing for. In more of like the business and consulting realm, you might be given a real live business problem that the company is facing and asked to develop a solution or a presentation or, you know, a, a um, budget if, if you're in more of like a finance or accounting type of position. To, to showcase your skills in that area. Um, some examples we have here might include things like market sizing, financial modeling. Really, the moral of the story here is that your technical interview could really be based on anything that is re re related to the position. So um, if our employers could talk a little bit about like what, I, I guess, how do your organizations decide what the technical interviews are going to focus on for each position? Like, what is that kind of based on? And then if you don't mind sharing maybe some examples, I think that would be really helpful as well. Yeah, so, um, oh, sorry, Salish. Um, so um, I kind of hit on it a minute ago too, but something that we do typically with um, our in-person interviewing, um, so two things that relate to this slide. We do whiteboarding. Um, I honestly didn't know it was a term called whiteboarding, but what we do and what we look for are a bunch of different skills that we end up embodying on the day-to-day -day in our work. And so with whiteboarding, or sometimes we'll bring a flip chart in and give someone like a marker, but we ask them a question um, and ask them to visualize it and you know help use the whiteboard or the flip chart as a tool. And then that helps us get an idea for visually how well organized is, is this person in terms of how they approach a problem. What do they, you know, do to group different, you know, considerations or factors into different buckets? How do they prioritize and rank those different um, elements? And then what do they do to, you know, basically justify one decision over another? Um, another thing is building presentations. So this kind of ties back to the communication element as well. And so 
pretty much every single interview we do um, also revolves around some sort of presentation element. Um, and so we typically ask someone to talk about like a project or something significant that they work on or address a problem that we encounter on the day to day, like you know, a customer problem or you know, some sort of project like that um, and how they would approach it. Um, and then what the significance and impact of that would be. So those are all things that we do, you know, to basically justify a solution to a customer and help them come to, you know, understanding the value of that as well. And so we, you know, we look for that um, and how we kind of tackle different things in the interview. Um, and yet similarly, uh, how interviews, um, what what type of interviews happen through Google kind of differs where you are and in your like what stage of the career you're in. Um, for example, if you're like looking for an internship, it's usually like real time coding assessments virtually one or two. Whereas if you're like just graduated school, um, it might be more whiteboarding in, on site. And then if you're later on in your stage of career, it's whiteboarding, but there's a new type of interview called system design, which is more designing a system rather than just uh, purely coding. Um, but early on in the career, it's more just coding questions and it's a mix of uh, real time virtually and in person whiteboarding. Um, and the coding question itself is generally a pretty simple coding question in the sense that it's not going to take a lot of code to uh, find a solution. It's more working your way to find that simple solution. Um, and a lot of times the coding is done on whiteboards, which um, if you're not used to, it's very different because a lot of times people are used to typing using IDEs and then they they, they start trying to write and they're, they, they blink. So do practice whiteboarding before coming on site. That That's a good tip, especially with something like coding that is traditionally done, you know, digitally. Um, it can be a shock to do that by hand. Um, so it sounds like some of the factors that both of your organizations consider is what point someone is in their career and that that would have an impact on what the interview focuses on, as well as what what position they're interviewing for and what types of scenarios they might face in a day to day basis in that position um, and, and have the interview as closely reflect those scenarios as possible. Would you say there's any factors that I, I missed there in terms of how how the focus of the technical interview is decided? No. All right. Sounds good. So it sounds like that's the summary of this this slide for today. So thank you both um, for your perspective on this introductory section of what is a technical interview and a little bit about like what students can expect if they're if they're going through a technical interview process. But I think um, perhaps the most important question is how do you prepare for technical interviews? So I know as a career coach here at UConn, I get this question a lot. Students will come in and say, you know, either I've never done a technical interview before and I need to prepare for one for the first time, or maybe I've done them before and I'm not being successful um, in my pursuits. You know, how, how can I do, how can I prepare better? And so that's what we're going to dive in with, with this section. So to get started, um, I will talk about a few things that you can do both before and during your interview to prepare and practice for technical interviews. Before your interview, a really good starting point is to research the company. Ideally, this is something that you would have done back in the application phase. So when you're working on like your resume and cover letter, but at this point, it might be worth researching the company further to determine additional details that you might not have needed earlier on in the application process. So if you can find out like, you know, if you're applying for um, a position that requires coding as part of it, like what languages does the company use? What kind of software does the company use? If you're going to be asked to do a presentation for maybe a client or a customer, who are the clients and customers of this sort of company? The more information you can collect, the, the better prepared you're going to be for the types of scenarios being thrown your way. Going along with that, sometimes examples of questions might be available on the internet. So research common question types, see if you can find any examples that might be helpful preparation as well. Once you find those examples, practice them. So complete sample problems, whether they're specific to the company or not, doesn't matter just getting in the habit of performing in sort of this technical interview context, I think is really important. 
And in addition to practicing them yourself, there's actually a really cool resource that's a little bit unique to technical interviews, which is the fact that there are videos of people going through this process out there that you can watch. So you can see how other people have navigated these types of like whiteboarding or problem solving that we've been talking about. So um, I recommend like YouTube as a good place to start to see what's out there, but um, our employers might have other resources that they would recommend as well. So I'll have them jump in on that in a second. And then lastly, practicing for technical interviews is hard to do completely by yourself. It's great if you can seek advice and support, whether it's from someone like me, a career coach, maybe um, a colleague or a, a classmate of yours who's in your same major or field of study, or maybe even an alum or an employer who is connected with the company somehow or has gone through the interview process before who can give you firsthand advice. So a lot of different places to seek advice and support, but those are some examples. Um, I will pause here and ask our employers to jump in. More specifically, I would love to hear from both of you if you had to maybe pick one of these five bullet points that you would say is like the most important thing to do before a technical interview, which one would you pick? And then also feel free to elaborate or add to any of the things listed. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of coding interviews, uh, a Good point here is just completing sample problems. Do as many as you can. Um, I'm sure anyone in computer science has heard of the site called Lead Code. Um, do a lot of problems as you can there. But um, I'll also add a, a point not here that I think is probably equally as important, if not more. And um, that's to do mock interviews, like try interview with other people. And the other person doesn't have to be someone in industry or anyone. Just like go to a peer, go to a friend, and do an interview with them. Because um, it's it's a different experience. Like you could be very technically strong, but you you could struggle communicating. Um, a tip that I received when I was first interviewing and that I would support uh, a lot is try to keep talking in your interview. Um, a lot of times, you a student gets asked a question and they're thinking about the question in their head, but they're thinking in their head, so the interviewer doesn't know what's happening. Um, so the best advice that anyone's given me is just keep talking. Don't don't worry if it's like a dumb thought. Don't worry if it's not well put together. It's better to just talk as much as you can. Um, just try to explain what's going on because that's how the interview is, is steered in the right direction. And a lot of times if you don't practice and don't do mock interviews, that, that idea of talking all the time it, is not there. So practice as much as you can, do as many mock interviews, and really focus on, on communicating and just talking as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off of most of that. I think uh, practicing is is the big one for me. Um, when I interviewed, for, so for my first interview for Hankel, um, when I was interviewing for my internship, it was for like one of these presentations where they came to UConn actually, and it was held at, at Wilbur Cross. But I remember putting my presentation together and I interviewed in front of my girlfriend um, and her like roommates. And I was like, hey, I need you guys to like ask me questions and stuff. And that was a huge help for me. I had done some like public speaking classes through, um, you know, some classes at UConn and then through like high school and stuff like that. But, but doing that, like to Salish's point, like you could know all of the stuff that you wanna talk about, but if you don't get the practice of running through it, like doing a dry run, like, I think I could have said what I wanted to say in my sleep at that point after that. And so that was that was hugely helpful for me. And then another really big point uh, to build off of one of Salesh's other ones, talking through is a hugely important uh, skill that can be done poorly. Like it can be it can be a trap sometimes, too, where like you don't want to get caught talking in circles if you don't know something. And so being comfortable with being uncomfortable and you know, it's okay to admit if you don't know something. Yeah, it's a, a space for you to demonstrate your skill and knowledge, but, you know, a strength in that regard too is, is acknowledging something you don't know necessarily and then utilizing the resources, whether that's the interviewer, the panel, or whatever else you have at your disposal to kind of get to that solution together. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you both for jumping in there. I also can't reiterate 
the importance of practicing enough. Um, so I'm glad that you both picked that one to really like focus on here. I do think it's really important. And one point that I'll just reiterate is even if it's not practice with people in your industry or in your field, it doesn't matter. Any kind of practice is helpful. So whether it is like your roommate or your partner or your family, just getting getting comfortable with that is is great. I would also recommend practicing with someone who has maybe a technical background and, and has a deeper understanding of what your what your subject matter is. But any practice is helpful practice. So I think that's a really great great tip. Um, and in terms of coding interviews, um, I know uh, Silesh mentioned Leap Code is a great resource. Um, maybe we'll have some time to talk about others later, but I think that's a really good one to, to get started with. So I think um, that is also a little bit of a good transition into talking about during your interview. Some of these points have already been made, but want to reiterate them for sure. Um, if you are are for the first time seeing the prompt for your technical interview during the interview, it's always appropriate to ask for clarification. Sometimes students will, will ask me like, is that okay? Like, do I just have to take the information they provided to me at surface level and run with it? And the answer is no. If you have questions, go ahead and ask those questions. I would not recommend using your entire time to ask questions, but if there's things that you're unsure about, or if you wanna just make sure you're headed in the right direction, you can definitely ask clarification to make sure and to boost your confidence in that, that moment. Um, sometimes, this is, and this goes to something that Vinny just mentioned, sometimes you'll be given the prompt in advance, which is nice. Um, so that might not be quite as applicable in the, that type of setting. But anyway, it's always a good idea to ask questions if you have them. The second bullet point here, talk to your interviewer about your thought process and next steps. This has already been mentioned, but um, the simple way that I like to give this advice is if you remember back in like your elementary school math classes, the concept of show, don't tell um, or show your work, excuse me. And if you put like just the answer on your math test, you would like get two points taken off because you didn't show the work that you did to get to that answer. Kind of similar scenario here. You don't want to just have the final result be part of your response. You want the process to be part of your, your response. Um, when you're getting to a point where maybe you're getting stuck or maybe you're just getting towards the end of whatever it is that you're working on and you notice that, that there's like a mistake or a flaw, no problem. Just fix it and move forward. Um, even if you're not asked to do so, it can be a really good skill to show that you're aware of the fact that you made a mistake. You can identify a mistake and you can move forward from it. Honestly, sometimes the entire prompt you're given in a technical interview is here's a scenario, find the mistakes and tell us about them. So the, the habit of finding and identifying and, and building from mistakes is not a bad one to practice and be confident to showcase during a technical interview. Um, if you are doing anything in the moment where you are writing, it's important to make sure your handwriting is legible. You're going to be talking through your your work as well. But if the interviewers are sitting there like squinting their eyes and trying to understand what you're writing on on the whiteboard, on the paper, etc., that is going to distract them from the good work that you're doing. So if you know that like handwriting is a struggle or something that you it is not like your top strength, honestly, might be good to just like practice that and, and um, figure out, you know, how you can address that in an interview setting in advance. So that's not something that kind of catches you by surprise in the moment. And then last but not least, show confidence and flexibility. There is a lot to say for the way that you carry yourself in a technical interview. And even if you're nervous, there is still room for you to show confidence. So when you're presenting your answer, you know, speak with an even tone, make eye contact with the interviewers. Um, if you if you make a mistake or you do something wrong, acknowledge that confidently and move through it. Those sorts of things are always going to come off in a more positive way to the interviewer than if you sort of like shrink down and use a, you know, start speaking quietly or, you know, seem distracted. Um, th those are things that you ideally want to avoid in an interview setting. So the more confident you are, the better. Um, it's, it's not always possible, but it is something to do, you know, if possible. So once again, would love to pause and invite our employers to chime in. Um, any other kind of key points you would make in terms of the way to carry yourself or process through an interview while it's happening? Yeah, um, to build off the last point on confidence, um, 
like it's it's okay to be nervous obviously you know it's it's a you know pretty high pressure setting but you know being comfortable is is important with being uncomfortable again so you know practicing again helps with all of that um practicing in front of multiple people um but then also just you know if you can um you know like if you're doing an in person interview like just kind of understanding like how you want to go into the space can be a huge help um not moving around um something that i struggled with initially um with like you know presenting again in front of people was moving around too much i would like kind of sway side to side and so um you know just being comfortable standing being controlled and then not like you know fidgeting too much um is a huge thing because all those things distract your interviewer from what you're trying to communicate otherwise. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. And just kind of going over the, over the points, like a lot of these points I, I resonate with. Um, the first point for ask for clarification and prompts, a lot of times we give questions that are intentionally vague. Um, like we expect the interviewer to um, or you to ask questions to clarify. And a lot of times when they do clarify, the scope of the question goes down, it becomes easier. Um, and to the second point, talk to your interviewer about your thought process. Like a lot of times the, the interviewee gets 90% of the way there, but they're stumped on something. And because they're stumped, they, they don't want to present their idea, their thought process. But I would say in that situation, it's actually better to present your thought process because that's when the conversation starts and you can be guided to, to the good answer. Um, and then for checking for flaws, um, a lot of people, they, they write their code and then they, they say they're done and then that's it. Um, it's, it's really important that after you're done writing your code, it's like run through the code in your head, make sure you're actually done, make sure you like try to inputs and then say you're done. Um, and then to the final point of show confidence. Yeah, like we, we understand you're nervous so like, don't, don't get psyched out. And also like the interviewer is nervous as well. Um, like we're people too. We understand how it's, how, like where you're at. We've been there before too. Um, so try not to get psyched out, understand like it's a person on the other side and try to have fun with it. You're showcasing your skill. Yeah. I, I love that phrase that you just ended on there, try to have fun with it. I know sometimes that can be easier said than done, but if that's the way that you approach a technical interview, like, cool, I'm going to be able to solve a problem today that, you know, this company is facing or that that would will give me a taste of what it's like to work in this position, that can really be a game changer in the level of confidence you carry into the, the interview. So I think that's a really good, good tip. So building off of the point on the previous slide of flaws or mistakes in technical interviews it's not uncommon to be quote unquote wrong about an answer have the interviewer challenge a solution that you've developed or just straight up not know how to assess or address the prompt that you're given and the good thing is that none of those things are a deal breaker and i want to talk about that a little bit more so First off, as you see the smiley face here on the slide, um, if whenever possible, um, try to view these things as a positive. If you're adequately prepared for your interview, effectively addressing or responding to mistakes is actually something that can make you stand out amongst other candidates. And if any of the three of us here said to you today that we've never made a mistake ever in our in our projects at work and you know there was never anything that we had to fix we'd all be lying so showing that you have that as a skill set is something that the interviewers might even be looking for so definitely try to see it as a positive without being like cocky or dramatic about it <laughs> um we've already talked about acknowledging and communicating it remain calm um, if it's something where you're you're being challenged by your interviewer, acknowledge their point of view, talk through their perspective, um, and you know either incorporate it or present evidence supporting your original solution, whatever you think is kind of the best approach moving forward. But overall, keep in mind that this is part of the process. It's not something where they're calling you out or telling you you're doing a bad job. It's that they want to see how you respond to the pressure and maybe to somebody challenging what you're what you're working on. 
Um, one other thing I'll mention before I open it up for our, our employer's perspective on this topic is um, when you're given a technical interview problem, I would say most times, and maybe I would change that to sometimes, there's not a single correct answer to the prompt. There's often like a lot of ways to approach the problem that you're given. And so even if you don't get there the fastest way or the, the cheapest way or the best way per se, um, that's okay. You haven't been hired or trained in this job yet. They're not expecting you to do everything perfectly. They're just expecting you to put your best foot forward, communicate your answer effectively, and um, you know ultimately be proud of or confident in what, what you put forward. So keep that in mind throughout the entire process, especially if you make a mistake, you don't know what you're doing, or if your solution is challenged. So I'd love to ask our interviewers, um, have you personally ever done a technical interview where you experienced any of these things? Or have you ever been on the interviewing side when any of these things have, have happened? And can you share um, a little bit about that experience um, and any other thoughts you have on this topic? Um, yeah, so in terms of there not being a single correct answer. That's honestly true a lot of the times. Um, there's many times where there's like varying levels of answers and even like the best answer, there's three or four ways to do it. And that's that's like really true is don't, don't be dissuaded if you get one answer and the interviewer asks, oh, how would you do it this way? Because that might they, that just might be the interviewer seeing what else you can do, but you've already done really well. Um, and then kind of going off of that, seeing it as a positive, that's, that's a really big thing. Um, a lot of interviewers get psyched out when interviewers give a lot of hints and that causes them to do worse than they would have done. But interviewing interviewers giving hints is actually a good thing. They're, they're guiding you through. And it might also just be that they like what you're doing and want to see what else you can do. So don't get psyched out if the, if the interviewer is asking more questions, trying to guide you to a different way. Honestly, that's more a good thing than a bad thing. Yeah, to build off of that point. Um, so a lot of times, you know, the questions that we ask to challenge people when we go, you know, do an interview won't necessarily even have a right answer. A lot of the times, you know, we'll we'll do it just to see how someone will approach finding a solution. Because a lot of the times what we look for, at, especially the initial stages, you know, early in someone's career, whether it's an internship or, or a new hire for, you know, like an entry level is, is to see if they have the skills that will help them once, you know, we do give them proper training and once they are able to really get their feet wet and, you know, what they're going to be working on. It's way more important to be able to ask questions that will help you get somewhere than to, you know, be stubborn and stuck on trying to rely on just what you know and you know kind of dig yourself into a deep pretty deep hole that you can't get out of um and then in terms of challenging um you know a lot of the times like say less said it, it's a really good sign when the interview turns into a conversation that you're, you're having with you know the interviewer um, you know, when it becomes collaborative, that's when you can really like kind of feel the vibe setting in and say like, okay, this is going good. Um, and then, you know, when we kind of ask a question to challenge someone's answer, you know, it's to see whether, you know, for example, whether they like, you know, kind of crumble, give in and say, oh no, you're totally right. Or like, no, well, this is why I think that, um, you know, I can see that point of view, but you know, this is how I got here. Um, and so it, it's kind of to see those you know um those kind of softer skills that kind of take place when when you're going through a problem solving situation well thank you both for your input on this topic it sounds like there's a general consensus here that challenging and conversation is a good thing in these interviews which again is kind of atypical for traditional interviews so i think it's an important point to make here um and I hope that our, our attendees today uh, can try to internalize that and really think about these technical interviews as a way for you to navigate like kind of like real workplace settings and projects in the workplace are collaborative. They're, you know, they're, they're conversations, they're team-based and that, that 
environment is really trying to be replicated here with the interview process. So this is our last slide of content for today. Just want to go over um, a few other kind of do's and don'ts for technical interviews. Um, do take your time. If you rush through an answer, it's more likely that you're going to make a mistake. It's more likely that you're not going to like verbally articulate everything that you maybe wanted to articulate or really show your thought process. So take your time as long as you don't take too much time. So if you're given a time constraint, make sure you stick within that, that time constraint. Also, um, leverage your strengths and knowledge. So if you are given an opportunity to, in a technical interview, showcase a skill that you're especially good at, you know, take that and, and run with it. Um, maybe if the specific technical um, question is about, like, um, product design, but you have extensive knowledge and experience in um, UX design, you know, bring in that UX design and background and talk about how your background in that area would influence your product design decisions and make sure that, you know, if, if you have strengths and knowledge that you think would be really appealing to the interviewer, br bring those things to the forefront. It's not always going to be possible, but if it is, go ahead and do it. And then um, thoroughly justify your answers. Um, like we were just talking about on the previous slide, sometimes you will be challenged. So it's important that you are confident and have reasons for the things that you're saying. Otherwise, the interviewers might, you know, poke holes in things or ask you for a justification or clarification on things. So make sure that you are really thoroughly thinking through everything and presenting your answers as such. On the don't side, try not to be intimidated under pressure. I know it's really, really hard, but the less intimidated you are, hopefully the better you'll do. Um, try not to ramble or provide overly long answers, especially if you are nervous or unsure about what you're doing. It's better to be you know, succinct and focused than just continue to ramble and potentially run out of time. And also try not to be overly critical on yourself. We just talked about a variety of ways that the interview might be like particularly stressful or there might be like a focus on mistakes or things you could have done differently. Those are not bad things. So try to reserve the criticism for maybe afterwards or maybe never um, and try to focus on the positives during during the interview itself. So um, at this point, I want to just remind everyone that you're welcome to throw questions in the chat and we'll get to those in just a second. But before that, I want to open it up one last time to our two employers to kind of chime in on these do's and don'ts and and also mention anything else you would include in the do and don't columns that we haven't already covered. Um, yeah, no, I think a lot of these really hit the mark. Um, in terms of, you know, taking your time and really thinking it through, that kind of echoes a lot of, you know, what we were talking about earlier through showcasing the skills and how you kind of think through problems, um, you know, justifying your answers, talking through your thought process, visualizing it, whatever that might be. And then I think the biggest note to really try to internalize is, is to not ramble. Being concise and clear is the, is, is the most effective way to communicate. Um, something that really helped me with that actually was this technical writing class that I uh, took as a physics elective. I think it was like 2501W, but reading, you know, scientific literature can be a pretty good way of, you know, seeing concise communication. And, you know, it's, it's the best way to, you know, summarize a justification at the end of an interview. It's really easy to get lost in what someone's trying to communicate when they give a long-winded answer. Um, yeah, I think I want to highlight two points. Um, the first thing I want to do is say is take your time. Um, a good way to do a coding interview is take the first 10, 15 minutes to kind of plan out your answer, come up with an idea, and talk to your interviewer about the idea, and then start coding instead of just going to code right away. That's a very good way to approach the interview, and it also ensures that you don't code in the wrong direction and waste a lot of time. Um, and then the, in the don't, being overly critical of yourself, it's okay to have a bad interview. Um, I would argue that two great interviews and one bad interview looks better than three decent interviews. So don't don't worry about like one bad, one or two bad interviews. Just move on to the next one and try your best and really try to stand out. 
thank you both so much for your super valuable input up until this point. And in the interest of time, I'm going to have us jump right into Q&A. And I guess whichever one or both of you, if you want to answer these questions, you're, you're welcome to do that. Um, the question I'd like to start with, because it relates to something that um, Silas, you just mentioned, is what are typically the time constraints on technical interviews? If there is a typical one. Um, at least for Google, the interview is usually around 40 minutes, where we like to reserve the last 10 or five or 10 minutes for um, questions for the interviewee to ask the interviewer, but it can go the full 40 minutes. And usually how we recommend breaking it up is first five minutes, like ask questions about the prompt, clarify the prompt. And then the next 15 to 20 minutes, like start coming up with an idea, plan it out, talk with the interviewer. And then the last 20 minutes, 10, 10 to 20 minutes, write the code. So like the actual writing of the code is generally like the shortest part of the interview. Yeah, for us, uh, typically it'll be like a couple of different topics whenever we do an interview framed around like a whole presentation. And so we'll give a time frame for pretty much the entirety of it. Um, and the real, you know, one of the big things that we monitor too is whether someone is cognizant of that time frame. And, you know, stays within it, goes over, rambles, that sort of thing, falls way too short. Someone hits around the mark. It's kind of something we look for. Okay. And I'm going to jump around a second to one of the other questions that was um, entered here because it's related. Um, the question is, is it common to do multiple rounds of technical interviews? And if so, how do the rounds differ from each other? So yeah, for, for Google, um, it's, it's usually two or three rounds. Um, the, there's not much differences in the rounds other than the fact that usually the first round is virtual and the second round is you're, you're in person with the interviewer and it's whiteboarding. Um, and then the, the second round is more interviews in one day, but the general content is the same. On career level. Um um, if you're doing an internship, it'll probably just be like one in person um, that's kind of framed around like that one presentation for entry level, like into our rotational program, we'll do three to four usually, depending on the track you're going into, and then do like a, you know, technical panel interview, um, you know, several one-on-ones. Occasionally we'll do like a kind of more social interview, like a dinner kind of thing, like a mixer sort of deal. Um, so it kind of depends there, but usually we limit it to, to one hard set technical and then um, kind of give it, give it a little different flair. Okay, so sounds like unsurprisingly, it depends. Um, sometimes they're, they're like in Google's case, there could be multiple technical. Um, in other cases, like in Hankel, it might be one technical, but there are still other parts of the, the interview as well. Okay, awesome. So going back to the question I skipped, um, it's who at the company typically conducts technical interviews? Is it always staff who have a technical background or is it other people as well? Um, at Google, usually the people conducting interviews are people who are in the same role as what the interviewee is applying for. So for computer science, so yes, it'd be technical staff conducting the technical interview. Yeah, for us, same. I mean, it kind of depends again. Um, most of the time, it's going to be someone that's, you know, in the role, maybe the hiring manager too, maybe a couple different perspectives if it's, you know, more kind of rounded or entry level role, uh, like in the case of an internship, but pretty much always at least one person that has a direct relevance to, you know, what the position is. Okay. I think that's very helpful to know. Thank you. So the next question is, you mentioned Leet Code earlier as a practice resource. Do you, are there any other resources that you would recommend? Um, yeah, Leet Code is, is, is the big one. Um, there's also this book called How to Crack the Coding Interview that I'd recommend. It's a very popular one, and it, it 
kind of teaches you the concepts before giving you problems to uh, use those concepts on. Um, and then other than that, just mock interviews. Find people who interviewed before and do mock interviews with them. There's not really, for the kind of interviews we do, like a hard resource that I would say like to study up on. Mock interviews and practicing are the big ones. And then something that can help that if you are struggling to kind of find your own like style and like how you convey yourself is to, you know, I mean, just kind of be more aware of like conversations that you have, whether that's with your classmates, your friends, people that, you know, you know, and people you end up talking about what you do um, with that watching Ted talks also is a really great way of seeing how different types of people conduct themselves and, you know, kind of speaking environment. All right. So it sounds like still practicing is the top thing that we can do here um, in terms of, of preparation, which I think is is fair. Um, so I have a question that I'd like to, to throw in, um, which may, might be our last question because I don't see any others in the chat. But do candidates always know in advance like what skills will be tested in a technical interview or is it a possibility that they won't find out until day of so like for example what coding language or what um you know what their presentation will be focused on like things like that uh for us i would say it's pretty on the fly um you know, a lot of the hard skills um, can kind of crop up in different forms to kind of weed them out and just kind of see different people's thought processes. So we don't really do too much pre-briefing. Um, and so, you know, kind of a, yeah, then and there kind of thing. Okay. Um, for us, before the interview itself, you'll know what type of interview it is, whether it's like a coding interview or behavior or systems design. Um, but the prompt itself is given during the interview. Um, and in terms of like coding languages, things like that, it's kind of very open. We let you decide what language you want to use and how you want to do it. But we do let you know what, what type of interview will be. Got it. Okay, so I think um, just to summarize uh, a little bit of this Q&A here, it sounds like, of course, every company and every position is going to have variations in terms of what uh, what their process looks like and how that process is communicated and facilitated. But in general, the things that you're looking for during a technical interview seem to be pretty standard across the board. So those communication skills, those technical skills, um, the ability to the interpersonal skills as well, um, and the ability to kind of use those problem solving skills in a potentially high pressure, high stress situation. So um, similarities and differences as expected between between companies and positions. So we have um, just a, a two minutes left in our, our session today. So I just wanted to give each of the employers a chance to share a wrap up, like maybe one closing thought of something that um, either you wanna reiterate one more time or something that we didn't cover in terms of what our students who are preparing for technical interviews should really know. Um, and then that will be it for today. So whenever you're ready, feel free to chime in. Um, yeah, I, I guess the one point that I reiterated I'll read it and have been saying over and over again is really try to treat the interview as a conversation, not a test. Like the interviewer is there, he's there, treat them as a colleague, converse with them, uh, figure out a solution together and get and get to uh, get to a good solution. Um, and as a result, if it's a conversation, like I know it's hard, but try to have fun with it. Totally going to steal that line. Salish, but I, I like the having fun with it aspect too. Um, the biggest thing for me that helped me feel like I was having the most success in the interviews that I've been a part of, you know, both on the interview e side and the interviewer side is when, you know, it really turns into just people talking. So I would say be confident, be comfortable, don't sweat it too much and just be, you know, ready to roll. Awesome.
Thank you both so much for your super, super valuable advice today. And thank you for all of our students who tuned in as well. We hope you found the content helpful. Um, my one wrap up point will just be, again, the importance of practicing if you're preparing for a technical interview. And one of many, many resources you have to practice is our office, the Center for Career Development. So. I do have our, our website URL here on the slide. Um, I'm also going to put a link in the chat or a, a pop up here um, with a link to schedule a meeting with a career coach. If that's something that you would like to do, we can talk with you more about technical interviews. We can even help you maybe find some um, examples online for you to practice with. We can help you develop just like a preparation strategy, whatever it is. Um, we can at least help you talk through some of your, your options. But um, we wish you the best of luck with any technical interviews you have coming up um, and yeah, hopefully we can be of assistance in the future. Thanks everyone and hope you have a great rest of your Thursday evening. Thank you.